Hello students, you are welcome in my online teaching classes. I am Shishpal Chauhan. Today uh, I have brought the poem, The World is Too Much with us for the students of BA second year, semester 3 and other students also. Let me read the poem first. The world is too much with us, late and soon. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away, a sordid boon. The sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are up gathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, we are out of tune. It moves us not. Great God, I would rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn, so might I, standing on this pleasantly, have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, or hear old Triton blow his wreathed horn. Now, dear students, let me tell you something about the poet. This poem has been written by William Wordsworth, who was born in 1770 and died in 1850. He was a great romantic poet and he was fortunate enough to live a long life and he had a long poetic career. He was a great worshipper of nature. Let me tell you something about the poem also. In this poem, he laments that human beings have become more attached to material things. He expresses his deep concern over people's growing love for worldly things. Man has become slave to the god of money, mammon. He appeals to all of us to give up mammon worship and start loving nature. At that time, industrialization had just started showing its impact on human minds. Let me read the first stanza, then I shall proceed to explain the difficult meaning in the passage. Then I shall explain these lines. The world is too much with us late and soon. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away a sordid boon. Let me take word meaning first. The world, here it means love for material things. Late and soon means every time. Little means very less, almost nothing. Sordid means abhorrent, detestable, hateful or dirty. Boon, the thing that is helpful for human beings, it may be called a blessing, paraphrase. In this stanza, the poet makes a strong case against all of us for our growing love for material things. We have made ourselves detached from nature. We are every time busy in earning and spending money. We have no communication with nature. The poet has used the possessive pronoun ours for nature. It means he wants to say that God has created nature for all the creatures on the earth. So nature belongs to us and we also belong to nature. We cannot afford separation from it. If it happens, harmful effects on the earth can be felt or seen. We have given our hearts to material things. It means we have started loving them. We have become obsessed with them. We have become crazy after material things. In our love for material things, we are wasting our time and energy. The poet calls material things a sordid boon. He uses a paradox to explain as to what material things are in reality. Sordid means detestable, that is hateful. The word boon means a blessing or the thing which is very helpful and beneficial for human beings. If a thing is beneficial for us, then how can it be hateful and mean? Actually, the poet has used too much in the title of the poem, The World is Too Much With Us. We have a clue here to explain the meaning of the paradox sordid boon. It seems that the poet does not have much objection to people's limited love for material things. 
In that case, it's a boon for us. But when human beings cross limits in their love for material things and they get much involved in their love for material things, then it becomes sordid. Hence the meaning of the paradox, a sordid boon. Uh, let me read the next lines. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are up gathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, we are out of tune. It moves us not. Let me explain the word meanings. Bosom means the front of a person's chest. Bear means without any cover like clothes. Howl, basically a wolf or a dog produces howling sound. It's a long and sad sound. Here the poet wants to use this word for the sound created by the blowing of past winds. Upgathered means huddled. This position is achieved when one keeps one's legs and arms together. Or when some other creature, they sit close and tightly together, then the position may be called huddling. Out of tune. In music, the person is out of tune when someone sings or plays instrument ignoring the rules of notes. People are not following nature, so they are out of tune. They are not in harmony with nature. Uh, next phrase is, it moves us not. The poet means to say that natural beauty does not move our emotions. We do not feel attracted towards nature and its beauty. Now, let me explain the lines. In the above stanza, the poet creates a very beautiful word picture using personification of the sea and the moon. The poet uses a straightforward image of the sea in female form exposed to the view of the moon. It's all symbolical. The sea has been shown as the symbol of mother nature. The second image that emerges in the poet's mind is that of the winds huddled together like sleeping flowers. Usually, winds blow strongly throughout the day. They cause so much discomfort to creatures on the earth. But at night, they become calm and quiet. The poet uses a simile of sleeping flowers for the winds that have now huddled up together as if in the position of sleeping. The use of the word howling creates imagery of animals like wolves and dogs. But the imagery sleeping flowers softens the impact of the violent winds in the reader's mind. The line for this, for everything, we are out of tune. It moves us not. Let me explain this line also. The poet says that people do not feel moved not only by the beautiful scenes described by him in the previous lines, but also all other beautiful scenes. They are now in disharmony with nature. Disharmony means out of tune. Let me take the last stanza. Great God, I would rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn. So might I, standing on this pleasantly, have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, or hear old Triton blow his breathed horn. Word meaning. A pagan means a follower of ancient religion of Rome and Greece, in which people believe in many gods and goddesses. Suckled means nourished, brought up. Creed means faith, dogma. Outworn means out of date, obsolete. Lee means pasture, open area of grassland. Glimpse means a short view, forlorn, alone and happy. Proteus and Triton, these are Roman and Greek gods. Reed horn, it's a conch type horn used for blowing to produce a deep sound. After depicting beautiful word picture of the rising sea waves producing the image of mother nature to the view of the moon and also of the winds that remained violent throughout the day and towards the evening sleeping peacefully like flowers, the poet proceeds further to declare his choice. He declares that he would prefer to be a pagan rather than affected by the growing materialism in the world uh, due to the first phase of industrialization in England. He would be ready to renounce his religion, Christianity, that advocates for only one God. He would like to follow the religion in which nature is worshipped. The stanza reflects Wordsworth's deep love for nature. 
Thus, the lines, great God, I would rather be a pagan sucked in a creed outworn, means that he would like to be a pagan than to continue following the outdated religion in which he was brought up. So might I standing on the pleasantly have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, or hear old Triton blow the reed horn. Let me explain the lines. The poet imagines himself standing on some open green piece of land near the sea, would have the glimpse of the ancient Greek and Roman mythical gods Proteus and Triton. The poet imagines himself uh, on some open green piece of land near the sea and he tells us that he would have the glimpses of the ancient Greek and Roman mythical gods like Proteus and Triton. Proteus would be seen emerging from the sea and Triton would be blowing the curled conch-like horn. In this way, he would not feel lonely and sad at all in the company of Roman and Greek gods. Dear students, here the poem ends up. I shall come with a new poem next time. Until then, have a nice day. Thank you.